Well, here at the Midwest LSA Expo, we're having another look at the Bush Cat, and it's on amphibious floats. And we saw this once before at Air Venture, but at that time, Jeremy hadn't gotten a lot of time on the, you'd flown the airplane with the floats on it, but at that time, you had not put it in the water. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, and since then, you have. I have. All right, I have. so tell me a little bit about your experience with it. Um, well, at first, I was nervous, like always. Your typical That's first time landing on uh, water, I was nervous. And uh, I think any first time pilot landing on water should be nervous. If you're not, there's something wrong. <laughs> but uh, It helps you pay attention. It definitely helps you pay attention. But I'd have to say it's uh, the best feeling in the world to land on water with a set of floats. It's just, I can't it's explain a special it way until to fly, you do it. Yeah, yes, right. exactly. All the seaplane guys know this already. You're, you're preaching to the choir with them. So for everybody else, if you haven't put an airplane on it, on the water with floats, um, you should try it. You should so what did you learn from it? Uh, tell me a couple of things that you felt like you went, oh, well, I wasn't expecting that perhaps. Or... Um, well, the first thing is, is when you're landing on floats is, uh, um, this isn't right. <laughs> an airplane's not supposed to land on the water. But uh, after you do it a couple times and, and you, you set up your, all your, your speeds that you need and do it, um, it's just a great feeling. Um, the best, the biggest thing is you don't want to put the front of the floats in the water. Sure. Um, you're trying to keep them up, you know, you want to keep them up out of the water and you're going to, basically you feel like you're almost stalling it, but you're actually flying it in. What's nice about so this... So you want to hold, kind of hold stick back hold a lot. Hold stick and, back. So how did, talk to me then about with that thought in mind, when you're coming into landing, not just your first one, I know you were nervous about that and you should have been, but after you got a little more comfortable with it, how many hours so far on the water? Um, I have probably about 12 hours on the water. There's 27 total on the plane right okay, now. Okay, and uh, so that's a bunch of water landings then, because you don't Correct. just drive around on the water, not too much anyway. So how many landings would you guess you've done on the, on the water? Uh, I don't even Rough know guess. off the top of my head. 50? No, not that much. Okay, so anyway, a bunch of landings on the water. We don't need the number, but tell me how the experience was when you first met the water and what your actions were and what you did to um, keep it right. Biggest thing is carry, carry power. Um, make sure your airspeed is up, but uh, not too What fast. kind of airspeed did you use? I'm coming in about 60. 60, okay. Um, I like to carry a little bit of power. I like to know that I have that little bit of power back there. I'm not on the edge of stall. I'm not on the verge of something falling out of the sky. You're deliberately kind of creeping I'm kind of just flying it water. into the water as a I pull A big lake, back. I'm assuming. Correct. Oh, okay. And pulling power back as I come in, but I'm going to carry power with the float plane. I'm going to always carry power. But basically, when you're you're coming in, you're 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 pulling it back, and you're almost feeling like you know you're on an angle that you shouldn't be because on our other bush cats, you're going to be at a different angle. So getting that perspective, you wouldn't land the land plane the same exactly. way. Exactly. Okay. So getting that perspective is a little different. Not only that is the float plane does sit much higher, so you're up higher on on the ground. You got to get are. a new appreciation so, for exactly, that contact point. Exactly. And where are you now? Are you? You're not really flaring though, are you? Not You're kind of coming in and, and doing what I would call an attitude landing. Correct. You're positioning the aircraft a certain way and then kind of waiting for, for the contact yep. with the water. Yep. Okay, so now you contact the water. What's your control action then? Uh, what I'm going to do with the controls is I'm going to slowly pull it back, keep the nose out of the water. You don't want to pull it back too much because you'll start to stick porpoise. Stick or throttle you're talking stick. about? Stick. Okay, stick. All right. If you pull it back too much, you'll start to porpoise. And you don't want to porpoise. If you have stick forward too far, you'll start to porpoise. So it's just kind so of kind of a magic spot. Yeah, in there. you just kind of feel it. You'll know what the plane is doing just by basically the seat of your pants. So okay, I, I call it flying by the seat of your pants. Well, but you'll good... you'll feel it, and uh, you want to you want to anticipate what it's going to do before it does it. Now somewhere downstream, after you've got quite a bit of time in the airplane, feel really comfortable that you're going to do any float plane instruction. I plan on it. Um, next year, I'm going to plan on doing my. Uh, Try to get my instructor rating for a light sport, and then get up to the seaplane and do all that. So we can do package deals, and and you know, the biggest thing right now is I hear from a lot of people is there's not a lot of light sport instructors out there. There's some not kind, enough. We need more. No and question. there's some instructors out there that will teach light sport, but there's a lot that don't want anything to do with light sport. So Mostly because they really don't know enough about it. Exactly. Uh, so exactly. experienced guys like yourself, that'd be good if you could do that, Jeremy. Um, in in. Uh, the airplane as a land plane without the floats on it is a very agreeable price. And we always stay away from price on these things because the numbers change and the videos last a long time. So folks, check with them after we get done and we give you a web address to see what the pricing is. But the airplane as a land plane is a very low price. The kind of numbers that everybody thought it was going to be back when is what you're still selling it for. But floats add a lot of value to an airplane. They cost quite a bit of money. There's some structure you can see to them. 
What is the float version of this today going to cost somebody? Um, this one, pretty much as you see it right here, is ninety-seven five. Wow! So under a hundred thousand dollars. I knew you were going to. I didn't know the number, but I knew it was going to be low. Under a hundred thousand dollars for a float plane is a smoking good deal for sure. <laughs> So under $100,000, and we're not just talking a float plane here, we're talking an amphibious, amphibious float, float plane. It's obviously sitting, you landed on land here. There are some lakes around here, but speaking of which, you've got a lot of your base in Wisconsin with your import of the bush cat Correct. from uh, South Africa. And uh, you've got a lot of lakes up there. A lot of lakes. So float planes gives you, somebody once told me, they said, well, in the whole country, there are less than 10,000 airports that you could land at, but there's probably that many lakes in just about every state in the country. A few western states probably have some less, but a lot of places to land if you've got floats on your airplane. There's a lot of a lot of places to land, and a lot of places welcome float planes. So um, that's that's a plus. Well, let's wrap it up here by saying that you've been representing the uh, Skyreach is the brand now. This is the name we used to know as Rainbow, but it's now Skyreach is the name of the brand. The name of the airplane is Bushcat. The name of your company is Aerosport. Is Aerosport. You're based in Wisconsin, and. Um, You've had a pretty decent year so far, right? We have. Sold some airplanes. We have, we have. Oshkosh, well, we started out this year with Sun and Fun, we sold one. And then Oshkosh, we had a bunch of sales at Oshkosh. So we're on a good forward lead and let's just keep going that way. Well, so. that's great. We're always glad to hear when you're having success in the business. It's a nice little airplane with a wonderful price. Get more information, give us your web address. We'll put it up on the screen for folks. Uh, www.aerosportplanes.com. All right, and that'll lead you, if necessary, to the Skyreach website, and you can find out lots more about all that. So you can get lots more information about the Bushcat and all kinds of other airplanes in the light sports space at bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining Jeremy Noel and myself here at the Midwest LSA Expo.